Hi, this is going to be a lightning fast introduction to flash and flash tweening. We're going to do some simple animation and first we're going to get started by opening up a flash file action script 2 to get started. Inside of flash we're going to type in three elements that we're going to use to animate and I've chosen a color that I like and I'm just going to type in three pieces of text in three separate text objects. Welcome to my will be the first item. The second item will be tij1o and the third item will be portfolio and we'll animate these elements. Okay. Now moving these things roughly into place I can do a better job of this if I turn on some rulers and then drag a guideline out of the ruler bar so I can make these things align a little bit better. I can also do a better job of typography if I take some of these elements select them and under their properties make sure that some objects are bigger than others. So I'm going to make the word portfolio look as big as I can here. TIJ10 is kind of an important word. I'm going to take it and I'm going to make it bold and big. But not too big. The idea here is I'm trying to make it roughly the same size as portfolio underneath it. And welcome to my will be a little smaller. Now when you move things around you can use the arrow keys to use that guide uh, guideline with deadly accuracy. Like that. Okay, got a good start. Not a bad time once you're happy with something to hit file, save as, and save the thing before there's any chance of you losing it. So I'll do that right now. Uh, this will be a flash title. Okay, doke. So now we're ready to start doing some animation with this and we're going to follow three golden rules for tweening. We're going to use classic tweening for this. Only symbols can tween, only one symbol per layer, and you must build flanking keyframes to make the tween happen. So, here it goes. First off, we have to turn these things into symbols. And to do that, I suggest you click on it, use modify, and convert to symbol, and memorize F8, because that speeds things up too. So this is the first rule. We're turning things into symbols. Click, hit F8, give it a meaningful name. And if you can't quite reach the object, eh, sometimes you got to move things out of the way to get to them. F8, welcome, is the name of the last symbol. Okay. I know they're symbols because if you've opened up a library, you'll now see those three symbols in the library. And you know everything's ready to go. The next rule is to put each of these symbols on their own layer, and up until today I did it the hard way. Now I learned a trick, thanks to one of my students. I'm going to right mouse click, excuse me, I'm going to um, left mouse click and select all the objects that I want to animate. And then I'm going to right mouse click, and this is a little tricky, you can't quite see it on the screen that we have here. So I'm going to have to ask you to trust me. Hmm. I'd love it if you didn't have to trust me, wish we could see this. Maybe we can do it like this. Select all, right mouse click. Ah, now we got it, okay. So a right mouse click, and you get the menu that lets you do this thing called distribute to layers. Now, watch what happens up here. We have one layer right now where all the objects live. Distribute to layers. They each get put into their own layer, and the layer gets named. And that just speeds things up immensely. I don't need layer one anymore, so I'm going to trash it. Now, you could move these things individually to their separate layers, but this is way faster. And the next thing is to set up a tweening. So we've, we've done the first two steps. We've turned these things into symbols. We've got one layer, or one symbol, on each layer. By the way, to double check that, you can turn off the visibility and just confirm welcome, TIJ, and portfolio are on separate layers up here. So the next thing is we have to create some flanking keyframes for the classic tween. So let's do that now. Um, I'm going to start by saying, OK, well, you know what, I'll have all this stuff happen over the, uh, the course of, say, three seconds. For the first second, I don't want any of these things to show up, so I'm going to highlight all of them by clicking and dragging down, letting go, and then I'm going to drag these things over to the 30th frame. That means nothing happens for the first 30 frames. This is called scrubbing what I'm doing right now, grabbing the little pink play handle and moving it across, and then all of a sudden everything shows up on the screen, just like that. Now what I'd like to have happen is to have one come from the top, one from the right, and one from the bottom. And we'll have that happen over the course of Let's do this over a little bit less than a second, about here. To make the last 
rule happen, flanking keyframes that match, we have to create a keyframe at the beginning and at the end of each animated little segment. So we've got a keyframe here. A keyframe is just a frame that holds some content. And I want to make a flanking one over here. So I'm going to click on frame 50. I'm going to hit F6. F6 invents a new keyframe that is a complete duplicate of this one, a matching flanking keyframe. And now I can take one or the other of these things. I'm going to take this one, the starting one, and I'm going to use the arrow keys with the shift key held and move it straight off the top of the screen like this. Now to put the key for, to put the tweening in, we've done all three rules at this point. We just have to invent the, the tween. And to do that, you right mouse click in the gray area between the two flanking keyframes and you look for create classic tween, not a motion tween, classic. Now when you do this, you get the motion. And it's a nice even motion from beginning to end. I'll do the same thing again. There's our keyframe. It's got a symbol in it. That's the first rule. It's in its own layer. That's the second rule. The third layer is to make that flanking keyframe for to mark the start and the end points. So here I hit F6. I'm going to right mouse click and create the classic tween. Doesn't matter if you move it first or not. It's going to understand what you're doing. And then I'm going to click on that starting keyframe and move it off to the side. And lastly, I'll do the last one. There's my symbol. F6. Right mouse click, classic tween. This one I'm going to have move straight down off the bottom of the screen. Whoops. Now I just made a mistake. I can see an extra keyframe that's been invented there. So this is the trick. You have to be in the right place before you start moving things around. Control Z and undo until it fixes. Make sure you've clicked on that starting keyframe. Don't try to move anything in between here or you'll invent extra keyframes. But now that I've done that, okay, I can move that down. And what I get, if I were to make a little mini movie about it, looks like this. Now that's only moving things into place in less than a second and then it's blinking away. So next let's extend the duration of this last frame. We'd like it to stay on screen for a while. So I'm going to go to frame 90. I'm going to highlight all the way down all three rows. And to extend this frame to make it last this long, I don't use another flanking keyframe. I use F5. That stretches out the duration. So now as I scrub across here you can see the three elements coming in motion and staying there until frame 90. And then it's going to repeat over and over. So we've done it. There's your animated title. It stays in place long enough for you to look at. Good luck. Give it a try for yourself.